My name is Robert. I'm here with Chris, and you're listening to Working as Designed. <laughs> I'm just realizing this is going to be a long night. Um, oh, man. Do we got more coffee? Mm-hmm. Good. Yeah. Uh, so, chat GPT. Oh, we're going to talk about this. Okay. Well, is it, isn't that not nope, what we're yep, going we're, through? We're talking about chat GPT. <laughs> uh, well, uh, or, or we're going... No, no, we're doing it. Okay. The, for fine. episode one, chat GPT. Oh, let's do it. Um, 100%. We, we intended on talking about this. I just don't even know where to begin. Like, sh- do, do, do you even know what GPT stands for? Something, something, it's probably something processing text. What does GPT stand for? I, I looked at this. Generative pre-trained transformer. I don't even know, like, I don't know what any of those words mean. Huh. Good topic <laughs> for first time one. <laughs> I mean, okay, so do you need to really, like, so, you know, obviously from our day to day, we're not in research, right? Yeah. All I know is I I I give it a a a word a phrase and it gives me back a prompt or a, a response. I give it a prompt, it gives me back a response. What does the GPT stand for? Chat generated pre trained transformer. Do you, like do you what is a transformer? I think it's because it transforms your initial it's an input output, right? No, I think it's what you know what? You know what we should be doing? We should be asking ChatGPT to tell us what ChatGPT what Chat is. GPT is. What does GPT stand for? I'm not even going to give it context. I'm just going to ask what GPT stands for. GPT stands for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. It's a type of language prediction model developed by OpenAI. What does a transformer mean? It's a type of model architecture used in the field of machine learning, particularly in the context of natural language processing. The transformer model introduces a novel mechanism called attention that allows the model to weigh the importance of different words in a sentence when generating predictions. In essence, it transforms the input data like text into more meaningful. So it's it's basically it's, it's like weighted phrases. It's like a recursive function. It's like it's like here's my input, go do some stuff, transform it, and then I got new input go do stuff until you get a final until result. you get it yeah that's actually kind of cool so i mean like i don't know so i know we're kind of talking gpt here but like i'm thinking like with mid journey like so there's um what is text mi- what so is text mi- to image processing and that one so that one's done via discord and you can give it like prompts but you can give different phrases different like weights to kind of like emphasize or de-emphasize your results so like, you know, let's say that you want, so actually with my sister-in-law the other day, she has a golden doodle and she really wanted to know what a golden doodle made of noodles looked like. So a gold. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah. So, I mean, so, you know, I just took like, took the prompts of golden doodle and noodle and then just kind of gave them different weights. I said, okay, put more emphasis on golden doodle, some emphasis on noodles. And then the dog came on as ramen. And this, this is built on the same, basically the same technology as chat gpt or is it like its own thing so it's it's similar so chat gpt what my understanding is it's using uh da vinci for the learning model and i know there's like dolly which is a dolly is the equivalent of mid journey and then da vinci just came out with there's a new system called uh leonardo and this is again more about the image text to image prompting but leonardo uses um I'm pretty sure the Da Vinci like version two, which is what ChatGPT is using. Are you built using Da Vinci? It's not telling me that it's built. Da Vinci is not a type of model architecture, but rather a code name for a specific implementation of the GP23 model by OpenAI. So, oh, as of my last training date in September, the terms Da Vinci, Curie, Babbage, and Ada are used by OpenAI for different performance levels of and pricing tiers. So maybe they moved away from the Da Vinci code name with GPT-4. Yeah, so I thought that was... Okay, so I mean, yeah, so it sounds like you're saying it's the 
name of the language. Well, yeah, it's the I name mean, of the it, language model that it, it was. Name. Yeah, it was true until just recently. recently. Yeah. Um, that's really cool. It's interesting how it takes a text to kind of figure out what the results will be. Yeah. Like you said, like, you know, it pulls out keywords. There's a video I was watching recently, too, and they're were, they were emphasizing of just at least correct spelling and using some sort of grammar to kind of get better analysis but honestly like i've written so much stuff in all lowercase well i i mean almost with every prompt i create there's a typo and it doesn't seem to care right so and, and maybe it's things that aren't like you know they're common typos or they're not as important yeah so i haven't i haven't used gpt4 too much but it apparently it's supposed to be better at understanding the intention behind phrases but it is significantly slower like i feel like with gpt3 I get a response really quickly and it's like 75% going to be accurate. GPT-4, it could take like 30 seconds to get a response, but it's pretty close to what I want 100% of the time. Um, How is that? Um, I'm trying to think here. What's the difference between like the paid model? Because I know when you had 3.5, like you did it and they essentially put you in the premium or the fast tier to get results faster. Well, no, it's some, like if you don't pay for it, you you may not have access to it during like peak hours. Like, okay, so, so it's guaranteed availability. Yeah, guaranteed availability. I think I pay like 20 bucks a month and I get the, I, and I get the, the, the newest model, GPT-4. Um, which I just check by default. I, I can't. I can't think why you would want to use three point five if you're paying for GPT. So what was and like I said, I got a little bit more experience with Midjourney. Um, but they have was it Midjourney three versus four, and there was actually so from an artistic sense, like the way so the text to image. What it would do is it takes the text to create like a noise generator. And then it would keep on refining the noise, you know, just all the single, like the blips and stuff like, you know, static on TV. Yeah. Right. Until it renders something appropriate. Um, the 3.5 model interpreted it differently than the 4.0. So you might get different results or it might have access to different pieces of information. So it might not be that, like you said, like 4.0 should be superior in all aspects, but 3.5 might be doing something better that four wouldn't be doing or just not there yet yeah let's i'm gonna read and i'm gonna read a headline uh chat gpt creator sam altman warns of job cuts um this is a quote from him every tech revolution leads to job change in two generations we can adapt to any amount of labor market change and there are new jobs uh and they are usually better so he's painting this dire picture but well not not dire he's he's painting this drastic picture but also saying hey there's a positive to this the jobs the new we're going to lose a ton of jobs but the new jobs are going to be better this is going to happen here nope like he's just mm -hmm. not even questioning it sometime or some jobs are going to go away there will be new better jobs that are difficult to imagine today what do we th like he's basically saying they're going to be hard to imagine but let's let's imagine what do, what do these jobs look like in 20, 30 years when this is as ubiquitous as Google? Yeah, I mean, I don't, you know, it's weird. And we've kind of talked about this a little bit before too, right? Again, the difference between even five years ago or 10 years ago. Like, I don't think prediction of the future is necessarily possible, but at least you can see trend, right? Yeah. And... You know, I think we kind of talked about it a little bit too, of just like what it, what does the community look like later, like then versus now, and like you know, as we talked about, there's Stack Overflow, like there's community built forums to help each other. But do you think the do you think the software developer job exists? Like, is he is he warning that? Well, he's saying job change. Um, yeah, not necessarily elimination. Yeah. So what is like? What do you imagine a developer's job looks like? Ten, we'll still, we'll just say ten years from now. Well, I mean, I think there's still, um, there's another. God, I can't remember who it was. There's somebody else recently talking about how does this kind of fit into their. Oh, you know what? It was um, 
was it EA, I think, or Ubisoft, one, one of the bigger developers, they game developers, I should say, um, they mentioned about how this might make things more efficient, but it's not going to get rid of people because creativity comes from people, not machines. Well, this thing can be pretty... Cre I mean... It, well, but you have to give it enough prompt, right? Because it's only going to regurgitate what it knows. If you're going to ask it to make something new, it's just going to probably... Well, I mean, I guess so. It can, no, it, it can it can think of new ideas, and the idea is this thing's gonna get smarter. Like, cre is creativity a an impossibility with with advanced AI? And well, I, I, that's kind of the definition: is what is creativity, right? Is it just taking existing ideas and remixing them, or is it something that's? I mean, I feel like when I think of me being creative, I look around at what's working at what's not working and i take i take a stab at something slightly new but incorporates a lot of the things that work like right what what are we doing right now we're trying a podcast i didn't come up with the idea of buying mics getting a table you know yeah. talking like i we saw this work like but we would say like we would look at what we're doing and say oh that's creative like they're they're making a podcast I could probably ask ChatGPT to come up with an idea for a podcast. And, it, you know. Yeah. But, I mean, I think, but okay, so is it going to be something that's topical or, I don't know, coherent? Give me an idea for a podcast. Let's see what it says. <laughs> Absolutely. Here are a few unique podcast ideas. Artificial intelligence in everyday life. Each episode can dive into how AI is integrated into different aspects of our daily lives. Future of work post-pandemic. Okay, so this thing clearly is aware of current events. Yeah, like, it's yeah. definitely pulling from current headlines. Um, so well, from what, September of 2021. Oh, but here, okay, here we go. Sustainability stories highlight initiatives, technologies, and individuals making a difference in creating a sustainable future. Hidden history. There's always more to history than what's taught in school. This is pretty creative, dude. Like... I around the world in 80 dishes if you love food and culture this podcast yeah I mean there's there's these don't even like relate to one another it's just like literally yeah yeah but I mean like okay so like I would think food you know food channels and things like that are pretty popular or ubiquitous yeah technology te technology like it's literally what you're here to do and honestly I think what chat GPT is usually more for the more technical crowd than lay people yeah and I don't yeah I, I I I think like it I could see a future where GPT so um, imagine you're a you you got a million dollars or you got 10 million dollars and you want to start a company um, I can imagine AI coming up with an idea writing a business plan writing the code and even deploy like I mean what is the end could could a could a could a company a whole company be ran by an artificial intelligence i mean honestly well so short answer is potentially right yeah but i think it's also i i but again the the modus operandi operandi whatever that yeah the I, impetus of what your point was somebody had to put it in right yeah so so i mean like otherwise what you're going to do is saying like hey machine go self-create a bunch of businesses and then it's going to oversaturate the market and then just cripple everything but those are those are limitations imposed by us like we we're, we're we've probably somewhere there's probably something in gpt that says don't ever give yourself a prompt you know because eh. then you could like it, it could just go out of control like well i mean honestly though like you know it, it's a web-based system like there's nothing say, saying that you can't build something to you know feed into it yeah do you think um, so? So you're you're convinced that GPT is just going to be a, another way for developers to write code, but well, the developer is still going to be a thing. I think that's a short term because even even right now, right? Like, there's, I mean, there's still people that are doing COBOL, right? Like, there's legacy. You can make a lot of money doing COBOL. Sure, and yeah. ChatGPT is going to take <laughs> yeah. all that money from us. But. I don't know. There's going to be specialized systems. There's going to be specialized industries that are going to have to test for correctness, right? Like it might not need as many people, but it's still going to have to have some sort of element of object. 
and I don't even say it's objectiveness, right? Because like to a definition, like we're all, we all have faults, right? And we're going to all miss something. But I don't know. I, I just can't see it being 100% correct all of the time or so again, like in the field that we're in, right? It's all around laws and legislation, not all of it, but parts of it. Like those are things that are going to be very rapid and upcoming and the interpretation of those requirements, right? Like, so where does that go? You think that that's something that it's going to be like, oh, I know exactly the interpretation that you're expecting. Yeah. But I, I think you could, I could envision a world where it, like the AI um, develops a policy and measures its success based on some criteria that is given Definitive to it. Definitive metrics. Yeah. yeah. And it iterates over that until you reach the desired outcome. Like a great example is like road design. You could, you could have AI develop roads and instead of doing it in a model where, you know, humans are unpredictable, it could actually develop a road and then evaluate it, the traffic over a five, 10 year period and then develop a better road and a better road and a better road. And then within a hundred years, people aren't designing roads anymore. The, the general intelligence is, I could see that. So you use an interesting term of general intelligence. Yeah, I, I kind of went there. Yeah. So, I mean, like, so what is the difference between, like, a general intelligence versus anything else? So. Yeah, I don't know the, I don't know the, are you a general intelligence? I think ChatGPT is considered a general intelligence. Is it? I'm pretty sure it is. N no, it says, it says, while I, I'm, while I can generate human-like text based on the input I receive, my understanding of the capabilities are still very limited. A general intelligence would have a broad understanding of the world. So, in contrast, I'm a machine learning model, specifically a version of OpenAI's GP4. And while I can generate text that seems intelligent, I do not have understanding or consciousness. So this is, this is, that is the, that, that seems a bit, diff, like, that's a high mark to for what constitutes a general intelligence. I would have thought GPT was a general intelligence. There, well, honestly, and I think the, projection right now is what the next six months to a year general intelligence may be obtained with the breakthroughs that chat gpt has been made has yeah, made. it's it's scary like and I, I know this is this is sort of off topic but like i i play rocket league which has been viewed as it's a physics-based game mm -hmm. and it's been viewed as impossible to hack you can't can't hack it because it's physics-based and mm -hmm. you need a mind that can do it, those calculations do the calculations AI has proven that that's not the case. They they within the last like few months, they've they've basically hacked Rocket League and in real time, Rocket League is a car soccer game. In case you don't know, um, so your car hits a soccer ball and the ball goes and there, it, it's there's an infinite number of possibilities that this ball can move and they've figured out how to interpret all of those possibilities to look at the opponent's car, decide where it's going, how to react. Um, I, yeah, I, I, I mean, there are things that we thought were physically impossible or at least a hundred years away mm -hmm. that they've done in the last six months that I, I, I never would have dreamed of where we set, right. You know, right now they're talking about we're in the golden era of software development. Are we? Yeah. Well, what, what we're, makes... we're at the end of it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> right, they're, they're, they're saying with the advent of chat GPT, we're at the end of the golden era. Man, this is like the dark ages are next, or what What are they saying? It, it's a renaissance, right, is I think what they're declaring it. Because it's going to be, you know, this is the, the quote-unquote, like, redefin redefining um, the job market, right? Like, when Google started becoming a thing, like, that was a redefinition. Because, again, now you don't need to know all the manuals. You have a resource to go to and ask a question and then go somewhere right it wasn't as sophisticated but yeah or maybe maybe like a better analogy I, I don't know like i'm thinking like machine like machine code like i had to understand how like transistors work and like the like the actual assembly but when we started coding you could program in natural human english and roughly uh, roughly yeah but enough to where it kind of made kind of made sense yeah 
Yeah, um, and, and I think well, so again, what we did of what C sharp and for this is getting the hyper technical here, but like C sharp and like C well C plus plus, I think C sharp, they're known as uh, third generation languages, where SQL is a fourth generation, and for each generation that you get, it's becomes more and more English language. Who decides like when the generations begin and end? I, I think it depends on how readable it is and oh. like how much of a sentence it actually becomes. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. I guess SQL is more readable. Yeah. Cause select star, like select everything from this table. Like it's basically just, it, English. It's a, yeah, yeah, it's a broken sentence, but yeah. Yeah. Like, could you imagine? Okay. So could you imagine a language that is just English? Like, uh, you mean like Arnold C? Wait, what? Arnold C? Oh yeah. Uh, so somebody took the C language and then they use all of Arnold Schwarzenegger's like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna. Back. I'm definitely gonna put this on the screen. It's showtime. <laughs> Talk to the hand. You have been terminated. Wow. Yeah. So it's just like a bunch of movie quotes that he's used. That's actually kind of cool. Yeah. Otherwise, there's uh, there's a bunch of like languages like that. Another one was like ook ook. Or yeah, I but this this ook. this still like no no that that that's just like yeah, that's yeah. just funny. Just somebody just reskinning what C is and just rewriting the commands for yeah, something yeah. else, right? But in terms of like yeah no like a fifth generation, sixth generation. Actually, I think we're at fifth generation. Gosh, you know what? I should just look. Google it. Yeah, we got computers. Yeah, Google it. Even that phrase is probably going to end at some point. The word Google is synonymous with search. Boy, I'm glad we didn't we didn't latch on to Bing. Bing it. Sorry, Microsoft. I still love your products. Yeah, first generation, low level languages, machine learning, second, assembly, third, C C plus plus. Hmm. Four, uh Perl, Python, SQL. Oh, I remember Perl. Perl. Remember that remember yeah. that thing I built? <laughs> Yeah, I remember. Uh, I so this is at our, my inter. Well, no, I think I was a full time at that point. You were full time, yeah. Uh, there, so <laughs> Robert here may have written a CS. So he wrote an HTML to CSV exporter. Before before that, I did that. We had to write a separate code. We had to write separate code for every CSV export. Yeah, which is yeah. awful. Like, I mean, honestly, like it 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 was, it was good. It was smart. It just didn't handle t uh table header tags and it, uh, it got progressively slower the larger the file was i remember that like I, yeah I don't, I don't remember so, that i just so, remember there's a few tags that we started using because like, standardizing the ui and oh, like man. it oh, yeah it didn't understand like the t head and th tags pearl i oh, man i so the reason i got into pearl was it re regular expressions were really easy to implement in it um but i probably couldn't I probably couldn't read Perl if you put a gun to my head and said, tell me what this means. Well, what was funny about it is, so you, you built this tool, which is great. And, and honestly, like it, it was nice. I was like 16 at the time. Yeah. So the, the biggest problem, and this is a whole nother conversation about what do you document when you're documenting your code? Uh, oh, man. The version of compiler was not documented anywhere. So I had so I remember we were in the basement celebrating something or other and we were watching Inception. Everyone was frustrated with me because I'm sitting down there downloading a bunch of different versions Wait. of Perl compiler trying to figure out which ver which version it needed in order to compile and run so I can make whatever edits I needed to. Man, which bait like was it the basement at, at work or at home? Oh, at work. Yeah, it is is a we were, is a company event. We were watching Inception. Yeah. Why don't I remember that? Yeah, maybe you weren't there. Was this after I left? Because we because yeah, I don't remember. It was the uh, well. It's when the basement got converted into a recreation rather than the developers getting kicked out of there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, yeah, because you were there for a little bit. I don't know, remember how much longer you were there after we got moved upstairs. Man, I wish I could get a hold of that program. I like, I would love to look at code that I wrote. So you know what's funny is, so um, the most recent project that we just worked on. So we just worked on a uh, project for uh, machine learning, uh, cognitive services, uh, translating an entire application. Yeah, a, a very similar endeavor to my CSV exporter. Give it HTML and it'll translate it into a language. So one of the things that we had in there was, uh, well, it's not we have, we have in there, 
is uh, SSRS reports. And what we need to do is figure out how to translate that without making any modifications, without making new report. It's, it's just a whole thing. Anyway, there's, um, uh, you can export it in MHTML. What does the, what does the M mean? So it's an old archive file. It's an, it's an archive format. And what it does is instead of rendering out as HTML, it re renders out a base 64 encoded file. And then like the browser just kind of knows how to read it. Oh, that's ugly. It is awful. But it was a challenge that we had because of the embedded images. If I did it as HTML5, which would have looked, worked great and been fantastic, but I wasn't able to figure out how to get images to embed because it still le left them as local links. And like the, the way our system is designed, we couldn't do it. So we needed to get the files to be embedded or all the images to be embedded. MHTML was the answer. Base64 decoded take the HTML, rip it out. Um, and it's an HTML4 standard. I think it's, I don't know if it's strict or not, but whatever the case. Anyway, so from that CSV export project, way back when, I remember I used um, HTML Agility Pack, which is a, it's a nice tool that you can just give it an HTML document, it'll render it out, and then it's just got everything in a tree structure that you, you can just traverse. suck out different parts of the HTML and, DOM. And what yeah. it uses is it uses um, a format called um xpath or not format but like a search called mm -hmm. xpath which is also in sql and things like that so i remember using that for the csv exporter way back when oh really uh, yeah to because wow. we, yeah because we had to rewrite it and you, re I, you rewrote my exporter we did wow i was i was so mad at my team <laughs> they were bickering um i'm sure you can remember the two individuals that did not get along uh, we, we won't name them but yeah yeah they were bickering and they spent a day. Oh, I should, I think it should be this. I think it should be this. So I was a jerk. I was frustrated at their conversation. I was like, I bet you I can finish this tonight. Um, I said, screw that. Went home, built it, brought it in. Like, oh man, this is so cool. Anyway, fast forward 10 years later or whatever, right? We're doing this translations project and I'm like, Hey, I remember this tool that I did for traversing the DOM in HTML. We should use the same thing. So we did. And the intern I'm working with, or actually, no, before even that. So I have a habit of I'm not going to ask somebody to do something that I can't do myself. Right. So if I can't help even explain a little bit of what you're going to try to do, like I, I'm of no help to you. You know, I'm not just going to leave you on an island. I don't think I would be successful if I follow that rule most of what i ask people to do i can't do myself anymore yeah well i mean i think i'm getting to a point that i think i might need. anyway yeah <laughs> i don't know that's part of like what i grew up like through my yeah. working is just like you know also like if you're not moving you're going home kind of thing so like yeah you worked in service though that right and, and that's just yeah. the mentality right like if there's no more work to be done you're out of here yep anyway um so that's where 10 years later and I'm trying to figure out how to get this implemented in our, you know, our weird SSRS solution. So I'm like, okay, like, let me go to the HTML agility pack. I forgot how XPath works, whatever it is. Boom, right at the bottom. Hey, or actually, yeah. So anyway, so I know about XPath. I'm trying ChatGPT. GPT, ChatGPT sucked. Wasn't great. Gave me wrong information. And I, I had a very hyper specific, I can only do this in one XPath, like, thing right like you could have to do it in one regex you couldn't, essentially you couldn't what it was. do like multiple like statements it had to be one long statement that basically got you anywhere i needed it to you needed it to yeah, yeah so so like i knew where the root of the application or root of the dom was and then i knew like how many tables down it was you know because it's a report yeah it's fairly well structured it's got it's good enough yeah um so i started using chat gpt not great so it, it was giving me wrong information. It didn't understand that I wouldn't wanted it in one X path statement, whatever it was. So I'm like, all right, well, let me see what, you know, HTML agility has on their site to learn more about it right at the bottom. Boom. Hey, we have a chat GPT that is machine learned specifically off of uh, HTML agility. Path. Did they say we have a chat GPT or they like, we have a chat GPT plugin or no, like if, if you go to look at HTML agility pack, look at the bottom. It's going to say this is HTML agility pack powered by ChatGPT. Like, 
learned taught i mean maybe i'm exaggerating a little bit but like for the most part it's geared toward that specific language or that specific package hmm. so all the things that i was trying to do it knew what i needed it to do right so like so one of the things that it, the current chat gpt was is there's a difference between like select node and select nodes like it couldn't figure out like the difference of parameters between the two of them well this implementation did now, what was challenging about the HTML agility pack one though is it only allowed one prompt, right? Where ChatGPT is, you can keep on building on it. It can, yeah. So I think so. This is kind of back to the bringing this full back circle, yeah. right? Between general intelligence and something that's a little bit more specific, right? So I think when they're talking about general intelligence, it's just like you know, are you a smarty pants? Do you know, like I said, doesn't know what's going on in the world. Current events, current events, yeah. things like that. Give it access to the internet, right? Yeah. And then, and then I think so. Again, this is like where the developers come in. I think it's going to be more in lines of things like this, right? Does it know about this industry specifically and the things that are coming out of it? Yeah, right? I, st I, st I still think at some point it's it's all going to be one. It's all going to be one thing. Yeah, yeah. I actually don't know why. Like, I like. I, I was one of the first adopters of Alexa. I I remember uh, my wife was like, "Why are you, why are you bringing this thing into our house that can listen to everything?" I just thought it was cool. But like, and then I got the Google Home. Those things would be so much better if they had ChatGPT built into it. What are you pointing at this for? This doesn't have that. So there is a Siri plugin ChatGPT. But it's and not like it's sure. not native to Siri. Like it's it's probably limited in terms of what it can have, do. I mean, you have to install it. Like like I want to walk in my car and be like, I want to go to Chris's house, and I want it to like, and on the way I want to stop at McDonald's. Yeah, you I, want Jarvis? Yeah, I want. Yeah. yeah, but we're not that far from that. No, and honestly, so what's what's fun about this is I again, there's people that are trying to do it, and they're doing it in Python, so they're getting access to the ChatGPT um, API. Now what's what seems frustrating about it is it's not as intuitive as to like understanding my command and like asking it. Like there's still like some case statements and things like that that people have to do, but they're doing it in Python and there's like a text to speech or a speech to text library that people are using, but it sounds god awful. Do you have to like, like, is it free to develop against ChatGPT or do you have to like, you got the paid version? You got to pay. So you have to pay to be able to develop with the SDK? Uh, so is you have to pay to be able to interact with the API. So it's not even an SDK. Oh yeah, it's all done with Rust, like HTTP requests. I would imagine. But yeah, they, they said like for, to get API access, or you have to like apply to become a developer. It might be immediate, like you know how Twitter and people like that do it. Yeah, but... I like I I've been I've been talking to um, business owners and executives, and they they say things like our business needs to incorporate AI in the next three years or we're dead. Like this, people are panicking over how can we incorporate this? And it's not just like, how did, how do our, how does our developers development staff use chat GPT to write code? It's like, no, how do we bring this into our existing software? So we would have to pay for an API. Like, is it like, do you know how the pricing structure works? Like zero idea. Yeah. I, I haven't gone that far. But so this is one of the things that we, I, you know, I started mentioning to you before this though, is, you know, the question that you asked is, well, it's open AI, it's open AI, isn't it open source? Yeah. Well, yeah. It's, it's, not, it's, it's open research, right? But the source code is oh, right now still, it's locked down. It's closed source. That's, that's. For, for an open, for an open source, like entity. It, it's good. It's weird. Right. That's a clever name. Open it. Cause you, you think, oh yeah, it's, it's a, uh, I mean, cause wasn't, wasn't this, cre what was the. What prompted OpenAI to become OpenAI? Be become a thing. Oh gosh, yeah. I, that I don't know. Like, wasn't this a response from like? Um, it was a response to Google, I think, wasn't it? What prompted OpenAI to begin? Oh, apparently Elon Musk is a co-founder of it. Yeah. Yeah, their OpenAI was created in part because its founders' existential concerns about the potential for catastrophe, catastrophe resulting in carelessness and misuse of general-purpose AI. So it's like, 
it's like the arms race of technology. It's like we're we're afraid that you're going to use a nuke, so we're going to make nukes yeah accessible. I mean, that's really what it is, right? Because OpenAI isn't the only like language model that exists out there, right? So I know Google, right? They came out with was it Bard? Um, Microsoft is using OpenAI. Apple, I think, is in the OpenAI bandwagon as well now. Man, OpenAI was founded in 2015. That's crazy. Yeah. And that's what I was mentioning to you earlier is um, now I literally saw the video. I didn't learn. I didn't look into it much because it was literally before we started doing this uh, today. But uh, Orca is a new one that's on the scene and that one's open sourced. But you can't like, okay, so sure, it's open source, but you need like a supercomputer to run it, right? God, no. So so what's funny, so, you know, this is where I was talking, mentioning earlier about MidJourney and stuff, right? So there's a, another text to image engine out there called um, Stable Diffusion is what it's called. And you can install it in your machine. Use it for free. Now it, it is a little resource intensive, but like that machine that's recording our audio right wait, now. Wait, wait, what does this thing do? It, it's another so it is it's another mid journey kind of application, right? It's a text to image. Um, I haven't figured it out a hundred percent, but you can kind of give it a prompt. It's supposed to be pretty good, and it has some other part of applications in there. It's called like in painting or something or out painting. And like you can highlight areas of the image that you don't like or you do like, and then you give it more prompt, and then it'll refill in that area. I feel so you like, you can do it for like Photoshop and like all kinds of other stuff like that too. Yeah, I feel like that text image. I, I feel like is a a limited scope endeavor. Like there's only so many th things. Just open up a dictionary. That's that's all you need to really have images of, right? Whereas like ChatGPT, it it's. Well, what do you mean by open up a dictionary? I don't know. Like if I like, I just need a photo. I just need one photo of like every possible noun. <laughs> <laughs> well, so okay, so so I guess the question, or not even the question, but like the, I guess this question is how does the how do the language models learn? Yeah. Right. So like I I know for the image ones, you have to give it at least forty reference images in order for it to understand the style. Yeah, how does that thing run on a computer? Like I I just I always thought that was like the limiting factor was the like you you need like 400 GPUs. Yeah. I mean know. like and, and I think that's the whole I think that's the again, right? The renaissance right now. You don't need things that are that as sophisticated. Yeah. Like I think ChatGPT like the the main thing that they're trying to keep locked down is the language model, not necessarily the application. Right, because that's where that's where all the investment is going. That's where all the learning's happening. Now, then you got things like the EU and people like that that are saying, "Hey, you know what? You can't use this because you can't tell us how it got from point A to point B." Well, Hong Kong just banned ChatGPT, and like you can't you can't use it because the government can't. Yeah, they, they can't, can't moderate. They can't it. moderate because they don't know how. Yeah. Yeah, again, because they don't know how to get, how it gets from A to B. It, so it there's just, probably going to be like a, a Chinese version of ChatGPT. I'm sure. Yeah, that doesn't criticize the government ever. <laughs> Tiananmen Square is just <laughs> eliminated from Ta there. Taiwan does not exist. No, well, um, was it Taiwan is uh, e oh, was it East China, South China? Oh, is that what they say? Yeah, uh, it's it's a special territory name, but yeah. Um. I'm so you're not you're not convinced developers are gonna the 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 I like I I'm almost of the mindset that the idea of a computer like because you know what the original word computer meant right it was a person sitting at a desk who computed sure like we, we didn't come up with that word when we made computers it the computer yes. was a person like that I I feel like this is almost of equal significance like a developer right right now you say developer it's a person mm -hmm. i i imagine at some point a developer like here here's an example that i think something i was really thinking about this uh the other day if right now we so we have in-house developers and we have 
subcontractors and yep. they're based in India, whatever, super cheap, right? Quality of code is meh, but it gets the job done sometimes. What if what if there was this scenario where instead of a a guy in India coding, you had an AI that you that literally you gave it like a requirement and it gave you back code. So could 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 like that could happen. That could be a thing soon. So here is the question I've got. And it's it's the it's the philosophical one, right? What is the value of software? I mean, it's a utility. It 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 its value is in what it does. So what what do you mean by that? Right. So so like is it something that's long lasting, right? And we're going to have hundreds of iterations on it. No, I, or I, is it something that's going to be thrown away? Yeah, I look at software like it's a it's a plastic fork. You know, it it gets like the code we write now is not going to be used in fifty years. I hope I hope not. Like, I mean, I also hope not too. <laughs> <laughs> like it, if, it is. If it is, we're in a terrible world. <laughs> yeah, developers need to chill out. Like, it, what you write is not going to be like the Washington Monument. It's not going to be around in a hundred years. Like. I mean, I should Okay, so here's the thing. All right. Case in point being uh, Microsoft, how they have what 90 oh, what was it? How they couldn't do Windows 9? Yeah, no, they no, that, do that, 9 that's, because of that. that was a myth. That was a like I I think well, on officially they said that they just they they intended on Windows 10 being the last version. Mm-hmm. And now we have eleven. But like th- their their intention was this is the last iteration. We we don't want to end on nine. Nine's a dumb number to end on. It's sure. Let's end on ten. And then now you can you can because w- what's the th- what's the myth? Well, they they had code that was looking at does the Windows version start with the word or the letter with nine with nine? Yeah. yeah. I I feel like that was probably. I, I didn't like Snopes that, but I, I did actually do some research recently as to whether or not that was real. And officially, Microsoft says no. Like Sure. Yeah. But okay. So, but even for um, printer drivers, right? Like the original, there's some original source code from printer drivers that are still running printers. Yeah. But look at, I don't know. I just, I look at technology now and it's just like, it's, it's disposable. It's it. And expensive. Yeah, like, is Twitter gonna be around in ten years? Probably not. I mean, it'll get it'll get bought out by a company, and they'll just suck the user base out of it, and yeah, yeah. just let it die. Or I mean, or it's just yeah, it's just I mean, not on the end anymore. Yeah, or I mean, some software will be around, but yeah, no. I I back to your original question. I don't think I think software is a utility that is disposable. So, it, 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 what, what were, where were you going with that question? Well, I, well, I, I think it's back. It's to the point that you're. It, it's more around, you know, we ask this during interviews all the time, right? Which door do you want to walk in? The one that has the piece of paper that has everything lined out for you, or the one that gives you a napkin with the drawing of a house and say, "Hey, go build this." Go build that. Yeah, I love the napkin, by the way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so do I. But like, I, I think that's kind of the. It's a question of, I don't know. It, I don't know if it comes from company culture or if it comes from um, need, right? Because it from the picture that you're painting, right? It's everyone's, you know, anything that you need to go through the door of here's everything written out, that's what you're going to give it, right? Now, the requirements might be just a couple bullet points and it can extrapolate it from there or it might be a very detailed... 150 page specification of this is the application that I needed to build. Yeah, I don't think like I, I don't think you're going to build a software as a service product f- from it, but you might build a c- components a or component elements of it. Yeah, or like I was working on something recently where I had to import a bunch of data from an, like a blob storage container and I mean I basically asked ChatGPT to write it for me. Now I I, I basically had it write a bunch of functions. Like, yeah. get me a write me a function that can read a storage container. Now, write me one that can iterate over it and tell me if the file is a PDF. So, how, I guess my question for you is, how much correction did you have to do there? Not a lot, actually. Now, I like not a lot, really. I I I feel like at I got good at prompting it 
uh, you know, it, it took me a few, it took me a few like iterations on it. But once I kind of figured out how I need to talk to this thing, yeah, it, it was pretty good. And I, I would imagine with the GPT four, it's even better. Yeah. But like, man, it would be so cool if I could just give it a spec, like, yeah. Uh, and and maybe, hey, maybe, man, may, maybe there is a there becomes a standardized way to write a specification, one that can be interpreted by a, a, an a AI. Language, yeah. Yeah um how like man how cool would that be like it, instead of like writing code you write a spec and a spec is just a series of prompts and assertions you yeah know, for validation well i'm just thinking like you know i'm just building games and stuff too like i'm like i have a desire to do it right but my motivation i have no problem getting started and then the middle hits and it's just like okay now it's work yeah right like it, and i think that's kind of the and i think this comes out to the question i had about oversaturation right so like it might not be an oversaturation of companies but it might be an oversaturation of ideas right you might get the same idea regurgitated slight changes here and there like you know what i mean like how, how do you make sure that you have a quality system yeah, well, I mean, or maybe it doesn't matter. The, I don't know. Isn't the isn't the internet the biggest anecdote for that? Like, you have the anybody has the ability to make a website. Like, I mean, I can find a website for just about anything if I tried. But yeah, there there's like this natural surfacing of like quality sites. Yeah, so yeah, anybody can write software, but is it, you know, it, I I don't know. I I I I think. I, I don't plus your argument doesn't make sense because like you're basically saying well because anybody can write anything it's never going to happen I would almost argue that because anybody can write anything it's it's absolutely going to happen well so I guess I'm thinking in the sense of you know if you're going to buy a chair right like you know you got your artisanal crafters and Which, then you got your 3D printer. Right. Then you got your 3D yeah. printer. Right. Right. So like, you know, I don't want to say the Ikea because, or the Ikea furniture because that's something that I think has come a long way in the last few years of quality product. But like, you know, everything used to be all press board, press wood. You put it together. Oh, now it's snapped apart. You yeah. know, like I can see it. Obviously it's going to iterate. It's going to get better. Right. But somebody has to teach it to get there. Yeah. You know, but it learns so stupidly fast, like faster than we give it credit. I think, like, but it, it's people feeding it data into it, right? Until until it starts feeding itself, which maybe maybe that'll never happen, but right because it could it could feed itself. It should. Oh, I'm getting tired. I'm out of. I'm I'm hold, hold on. Now I'm out of coffee. I think that's a good place to stop. Yeah. Is that how we should time we should time the episodes for when I finish drinking a cup of coffee? Have a coffee with Robert. Yeah. Yeah. No, we're, that, that's not the name of the show. We're working as designed. Um. This is a cool mug, by the way. So is is the end of this? Well, out of coffee. See you later. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of like being in control of when we end the show. Like, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. Thank you. Bye.